We send 19 and 20 year old young men and young women too these days out there and we expect them to work miracles. We expect them to stand on a police checkpoint and keep the peace between two peoples who want to kill each other. And here's this kid, and he's going to make life and death decisions. And usually he makes the right ones. It's a war in which the human element prevails over the technological element. It's a war that's going to be won by our ability to influence the will of other people. It's not about applying technology to the battle. It's about using technology as a tool. But ultimately, the instrument of power in wars in this century is the human being. It's a soldier. It's boots on the ground. It only took a day for us to realize that this was not the move. It wasn't a game. The people didn't get up at the end of the day and go home. It is a life of unbelievable physical challenge and misery of rain and hunger and thirst and physical danger. The first round you get shot at you, you do kind of, kind of step back and go, whoa, that, that was coming to me. You know that the possibility is there and it's very real, but it's always going to be the next guy. We yeah, have 18, 19, 20 year old kids here that have seen death uh, you know, on a daily basis. You never know when it's going to be your time. It can happen in a blink of an eye. Come on, man, I think I'm here. I don't think people do comprehend the sheer terror of war, the fear of war, and the enormous suffering that goes on. Different name of the war, but the same brutality, the same suffering. No one understands without having gone through it. Soldiers don't want to die. But what makes them different and special is that they're willing to. They do it for one another. And if they do it out of a profound, yet simple sense of duty. Guy comes walking in, walking a little funny. Why is he walking funny? What happened? Well, I lost a leg. Oh, well, what can I do for you? I want to re-enlist. Where do we find people like that? The soldiers we send into the field today really project America's values. They go into the worst sort of situations all around the world. The soldier of my time had a mission to look for the enemy and destroy the enemy. But today, our military has everything from setting up school buildings, opening up classrooms, or providing health care. All of this is necessary in order to maintain stability, which is so important to our nation. Soldiers continually tell me how diverse their missions are. On the one hand, a young man or woman could be serving in Iraq, the next year in Afghanistan, the year after that in Hurricane Katrina. When diplomatic means and political means fail, it's the United States military, led by the United States Army, that put boots on the ground. And when the American soldier hits the ground, the world knows that we are serious about our objectives. My proudest moment in the Army was in late January 2004 when we watched the Iraqis conduct their very first free election. My proudest moment in the Army was when I returned from Iraq because I had all 301 soldiers who got back. The proudest moment of my service was when we got to go down and help the citizens of New Orleans. Tons and tons of people thanking me and hugging me and, 
you know, they're so appreciative because their world was completely turned inside out, and it's something that you can't explain to someone that didn't experience it. And one lady shook my hand and she said, thank you. She said, I don't know your name. I don't need to know your name. She said, the uniform speaks alone. I think the Army uniform is more than just a symbol of the military. People see the Army uniform as a sign of relief, a sign of help, and a sign of safeguard. It boils down to a handful of U.S. soldiers on a road junction, up on a red line. It's raining, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and they're being asked to move forward while machine gun rounds slap by their ears. We're never going to get away from that. When the Air Force flies over, it's important. It's a show of force. When the Navy steams up, it's important. It's a deterrent. But when the Army plants its boots on the ground, that's commitment. When we're overseas, when we're in Iraq, we think about those moments, what it was like at Normandy, what was it like at Bastogne, what was it like at Sicily, Salerno. These things inspire us to do our duty in our time. And it's our responsibility to make sure that they're properly equipped and they're trained and they're properly paid to perform this very, very difficult task. Well, then you got to be ready. you got to have everything together. Because you don't know when that phone call comes. If you don't have the boots on the ground, walking the streets, you're not going to hold that ground. I think there is just an inner drive for him to be a, the best American soldier that you could possibly be. He didn't want anything in return. He just wanted to serve. Thank God we've got young soldiers with the physical courage, the training, and the initiative to stand up and defend America in, in these kinds of situations. You put your best foot forward and you keep going, and that would be your boots on the ground.